From the sands of Egypt to the blessed land of Greece, Assassin's Creed Odyssey takes the smooth gameplay from Origins, adds a few tweaks and presents a new adventure in a bright, vibrant world. And for us Toxophiles, the Eagle Bearer is just as competent with a bow as with a spear, and what an odyssey we are in for. In this episode of Archery Pop Shots, we take a look at the historical context of archery in ancient Greece and the mythical feats we'll achieve in Assassin's Creed Odyssey. Greek mythology is filled with epic heroes, and the bow is inseparable from legendary figures. The deities Apollo and Artemis, the mighty Heracles, the huntress Atalanta, Orion the Hunter, and Odysseus himself, whose feats include stringing a mighty horn bow and shooting an arrow through a dozen axe heads. Even the strongest warrior of all, Achilles, was brought down by an arrow to the heel from Paris of Troy. These timeless legends are retold and sprinkled throughout the ancient Greek world, and Assassin's Creed glorifies these legends to titanic levels. While skill with the bow was ubiquitous to being a warrior, the use of the bow in combat held a much lower significance. Indeed, passengers from Homer and the Trojan War describe archers as cowardly and effeminate. Diomedes, upon being shot in the foot by an arrow from Paris, cried out, If you should fight against me in hand-to-hand -hand combat, your bow and thick flying arrows would not help you. It bothers me no more than if a woman or unwitting child hit me. Mute is the missile of a weak and worthless man. The disdain for archery was also carried over to real warfare. Combat was based on the Oplites, equipped with a large shield, spear and sword. The phalanx was the backbone of Greek armies, and Greek citizens, most of all Spartans, were trained first and foremost as heavy infantry. Archers had very little role in battle. Some archers were deployed as light skirmishers alongside slingers and javelin throwers, but very few battles were significantly influenced by the bow and arrow. Nonetheless, the Athenians were known to have maintained a core of archers, a distinction that is actually shown in Odyssey. As far as the game is concerned, it bypasses the disciplined warfare typical of this period. In fact, the conquest battles are unrealistically chaotic. Nonetheless, the game emphasizes the individual heroic warrior rather than organized warfare, and if you can look past the trappings of historical accuracy, the possibilities are literally endless. Those who have come from Assassin's Creed Origins may appreciate these small changes that make gameplay more streamlined, and things make sense in Odyssey. In Origins, Bayek juggled several different kinds of bows, each with a uniquely different function and ammunition. In Odyssey, the Eagle Bearer makes use of a single type of bow, based on the reflex bows that would have been imported from Scythia during this time. Instead of locking powerful abilities to bow types, the player can unlock and assign hunter skills as they level up and acquire more skill points. This allows the player to specialize into being an assassin, warrior or hunter, each with distinctly different playstyles. Some skills make a return from origins. The spread shot skill shoots several arrows in a shotgun pattern, and the fan favorite predator arrow is back, changing the view to first person and giving the player the ability to steer the arrow in flight. There are several new additions. Multi-shot automatically targets several enemies, allowing you to quickly burst down entire encampments at range. Random destruction does area damage, while devastating shot is a mid-range high damage burst that stacks elemental damage. Ghost Arrows of Artemis is perhaps the most useful skill, allowing you to literally shoot through everything, setting you up for some high damage assassinations without being detected. The player can also unlock the Overpower Bow Strike, which acts as a high damage finisher and crowd control. In addition, the player can craft several different arrow types, including paralysis for non-lethal shots, exploding, poison and fire arrows. Later in the game, death arrows can be crafted, which are much faster and stronger, though very expensive to craft. 
I found myself using normal arrows most of the time as the economical choice, and late game skills largely negate the need to use specialised arrows. The fact that you can assign multiple skills on a single bar gives the player much more versatility. Switching between melee and range skills is seamless, and the multiple hunter skills gives you the right abilities for any scenario and style. After all, it makes sense to carry multiple skills rather than multiple bows. When starting the game, you actually don't have a bow. Yeah, seeing a broken bow makes me sad, but don't worry. Soon enough, you'll be getting epic and legendary bows, with a few pet favourites that will last you the entire game. What makes archery interesting is that it is fairly well balanced with an initial steep progression curve, since hunter skills must be unlocked through experience rather than being innate to the bow, it takes a fair amount of time to acquire the skills you need. Early on, you lack the damage output for one shot kills, and skill upgrades are further locked into further progression, notably in upgrading your broken spear. The result is that you end up with a set of support skills that you can either use to initiate a fight, complement your damage in the middle of battle, or specialise into by taking more bonus hunter damage items. Further adding to the balance, you can't just sit back and use your bow skills to wipe out entire garrisons. In Odyssey, your bow skills require adrenaline which is gained from combat or assassinations. This means that you have to take other actions to increase your adrenaline meter in order to use your bow skills, and even then you have limited bars to use. This in turn forces the players to be strategic in when to use their ranged skills, or whether to save them for melee combat. By the end game, you pretty much turn to a demigod, which is fine, you earned it, it's in your blood. And while it takes a while to get to this level of archery domination, at least compared to Origins, this is fine. By this point, you're probably running through everything to clear out as quickly as possible, whereas every fight in the early game is a duel to the death. Elites go down a single hit, bosses pose little challenge, and while the default game mode scales enemies to your current level, your power levels are astronomical, and that's fine. That's what you get from making it to the end. Just as Black Flag added naval combat to the established Assassin's Creed 3 gameplay, Odyssey does the same for Origins. Now with free roam, or free sailing, players can now engage in naval combat. Your ship is capable of shooting arrows, throwing javelins, using flaming arrows and ramming. This makes for fluid, fast and exciting battles on the waves. While this may seem like a very practical and obvious way to use archers on a ship, this is actually not how things went down during this time, and it will make sense once you see the context. Archers don't do that much in this kind of warfare, arrows don't do anything to the hull of a ship, in fact there weren't even that many soldiers on a ship. Typically, a vessel would have a small contingent of marines and archers, whose main purpose was to defend the oarsmen should the ship be boarded, and this small scale deck fighting is fairly realised in Odyssey. The main method of combat was through the use of the ram, and not just to slice a ship in half, but to approach from a sharper angle and tear a wider hole in the ship as well as breaking oars. In that sense, the naval combat in Odyssey is actually a fairly proportional representation of how a trireme would have been used, but with more emphasis on an enjoyable gameplay experience that allows the player to get in and out of battle with little preparation required. In short, you don't use arrows to sink a ship. Naval battles were fought by ramming and boarding, and it was only with the advent of cannons that ships could blow each other out of the water. I'll be upfront, Odyssey is my favourite game in the series, and I'm the type of fan that loved Assassin's Creed 2 above all else. If you're wondering whether this game is worth picking up irrespective of the archery in the game, it's definitely worth playing. 
it's been a long time since I genuinely wanted to keep on playing and looking for more areas to explore in a single player campaign. The archery we see is well presented and integrated into the gameplay. Of course, everything is fantastical and mythical, and that's the whole point of the character. The base form is not much different from what we would expect, and the special skills are beyond imagination. The fact that you have more control over what to specialize in, and the freedom to change your bonuses and skills, means that you can enjoy all parts of the game without being locked into just one playstyle. No matter what kind of player you are, Odyssey is worth a shot. This is New Sensei, and as always, shoot straight and aim for your best.